Hello, I'm Alan Gordy. I'm a Houdini technical artist with SideFX. I'm on the SideFX Labs team. And today we'll be talking about terrain. Hello and welcome to Procedural Terrain Generation, a beginner's journey, a special presentation for the Montreal Games Workshop at the Houdini 19.5 launch event. Here's what we're going to be covering in today's workshop. A procedural landscape featuring a large crater with some small crater features surrounding it. We'll do this by distorting the height data using noises and masks derived uh, using height field project and height field mask by feature nodes. We'll use those exported layers to drive material blending inside of UE5 material instance using landscape layer blend node. We'll export the layers from Houdini using Labs Terrain Layer Export node. Then we'll ex import them into UE5 and set up a landscape uh, based on those texture maps. When we're done, uh, we'll have results that look similar to this. We hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. Okay, so you've got your new project. Make sure you save it. All right, now let's drop down a geo node. Let's go into the geo node, drill in. Now let's drop a height field node. So tab HF will get us all of the height field nodes filtered. Let's pick the regular height field node. That's our base node to get this started. We're gonna leave all the settings as they are except for the size. We're gonna set this to 1009 by 1009. And that is very specific for Unreal Engine. Uh, Unreal Engine has uh, very specific uh, resolution requirements for height maps and their masks uh, in terms of import. And if you Google for uh, Landscape Technical Guide Unreal Engine, you'll find the docs. I will provide the link at the end. But know that there are very specific requirements there, and there's a host of technical requirements beyond that that are uh, of, of importance to you uh, when working with landscapes in Unreal. But we're going to generate this in, in Houdini. We're going to focus on the Houdini side for now. So let's do that. Now that we've set that size, we're going to drop down an, an HF noise node. This is going to give us some basic shape and form for the, the terrain upon which we're going to add our large crater. We're going to adjust the amplitude down a little bit. We're going to bring the element size down to about 350. You can do whatever you want here, honestly. Uh, I wouldn't go too crazy, though, because we're going to drop a big crater in the middle. And in order to be able to see that, we kind of want the contrast between the flatlands and the crater to, to stand out to some degree. Uh, artistically, that's where we're headed. So let's pursue that. Now we need to uh, figure out where we're going to put our crater and uh, generate a mask for it. So we're going to drop down a sphere. We're going to set that sphere to type polygon. And set the frequency to 12. Uniform scale to 250. And set down an HF mask by object. HF MBO, if you will. We're going to drag that sphere into the right hand input as our geometry to build the mask from. We're going to turn on the template flag on the sphere so that we can see it relative to the terrain while we're working. We're going to leave all the settings here uh, as they are, except for the blur radius. We're going to set that to 200. OK, so we're going to drop down uh, an HF copy layer, which is a node we're going to be using quite a bit here. It lets us copy from one, one layer by name to a new layer by name. And the new layer doesn't have to exist. It can. It can, it can work with existing or new layers. It'll produce one. In this case, we want it to produce one. We're going to call this one Large Crater Outer. Now, we want to add another HF mask by, uh, mask by object here because we want to uh, produce a separate mask Oops, let's drop a transform in here. Because we want to shrink that sphere. And let's turn on the template flag on this, this sphere. And let's set the uniform scale to 0 0.85. 
So now it's smaller. And then let's pull that into our mass by object. And we used a blur of 200 up here on the outer. Let's use a blur of 100 on the inner. Now that's going to give us more steep walls uh, when we finally uh, use these masks to produce the geometry or the, uh, the terrain offset in the height data. So let's copy again uh, the results of what we just we just did, that mask, and let's put that in crater. Oops, my bad. Large crater inner. We're going to use these names specifically a little down down the stream here. So let's 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 go ahead and get those right now. Be careful with your spelling, uh, or at least be consistent. <laughs> Okay, so let's drop down in HF combine layers. And this layer lets us uh, work with a few different masks, uh, combining them in different ways and placing them into a target mask uh, layer or target layer. In this case, we want to use our mask layer. That's where we want the results to end up. We want it to copy, to start off by copying the large crater outer into the mask. And then the next operation is we want to subtract the inner from it. Okay. Now we want to create an HF noise node, wire the, the output from the prior node into both of these. That will cause it to use the mask layer if we if we cut this off here, you'll see that it's, it's going to apply this to everything. But if we wire this into the second node, you'll see that it now only operates on this area here. And even more importantly, uh, it's set to center. So if we turn this to add, we will now get uh, the walls here of our crater will rise up. <laughs> and that's pretty straightforward. And that's about all we want to do for that piece. Okay, next we want to create a mask that is an inverse of large crater outer. Going to add a HF distort by noise. Plug it into both of those. Leave it at curl. We're going to set the amplitude to about 20. And then the element size, we're going to bring that up to about 300 or so. It depends, uh, you know, your, your, your preference. But this is going to give us these, these ridges here. This uh, detail along the, the crater walls. Okay, and the floor. All right, so that'll work. Um, let's see. Next up, we want to do another combine layers operation. The source is going to be the outside of the crater, which is our current mask. We're going to copy it. So we're going to copy the current mask. And when we do that, we're going to threshold it. And now this is going to give us a very fine control over where this gradient flips. We're going to use this for a hard uh, stop mask to drive the scatter, the height field scatter node here in a moment. We're going to drop some other craters around this. So that looks pretty good. We don't want any other craters to be inside of that area. We want the inside of this crater to be pristine is essentially what we're saying. Uh, anywhere uh, that there is red, that's where we're gonna. That's where we're gonna. That's where we're gonna draw. Okay, that's where we're gonna scatter. So uh, HF mask blur. Set the radius to about sixty. That's gonna give us a, a smoother uh, fall off there so that it's not so, uh, so discreet. We're going to do a copy, whoops, an HF copy. 
to get that scatter mask out of there. This is going to be what we've just created here is our scatter mask, actually. All right. Now, we want to clear our mask layer now because we're going to draw into it. We're going to do an uh, HF scatter operation now. Okay. On this HF scatter, we want to pull the uh, output from our current height field operations into both the terrain and the mask nodes. We're going to leave the third input as is. We're going to change the scatter method to total point count using mask layer. We're going to set the total point count to about 20. We're going to leave everything else, just about everything else the same. We're going to change the, the range. This is going to set the P scale uh, ultimately on those points that are scattered. And we're going to use that to drive uh, the size of our, our cratering. So we're going to say, say 30 to 50. And we don't want the incoming terrain to still be there. Um, one thing I forgot to set is we want to use our scatter mask. Now you'll see that we've got those. There's our, our 20 points, OK? Now let's drop down a sphere. We're going to leave it as is. Let's drop down a copy to points. And all we need to do on it is set pack an instance. We're going to drag the sphere into the left. We're going to drag our points into the right. At voila, we've got our spheres for projection onto the, the terrain. So let's bring in an HF project node. This will allow us to draw. We talked about that a minute ago. We're going to draw into the, into the mask. By default, the HF project node uh, we'll do what exactly what it says. It's going to project that uh, geo down onto the onto the uh, uh, the ground below it, and you know basically bring the height up, if you will. That's not at all what we want. Right? What we want is to set the uh, layer here to mask because that's where we want to draw. And now you'll see that immediately it's changed into that. And we're going to turn on the uh, mask mode. And we want to set the combine option to replace. It's not going to make a difference for this particular run, but I think it's important to note that you'll want to pay attention to this combine method. It's going to usually matter a lot, especially when you're drawing into the mask. OK. So let's see, where were we? All right, so now we need to do a mask blur. This will let us blur that in place and have some control over that. Uh, let's see, we're going to leave this one at default. That looks pretty good based on the sizes we've got for our craters. And we're going to copy the mask out. So let's do that. Let's copy it to small craters outer. Then let's do another mask blur. And let's do shrink. And let's set it to 4. Now, if we have a look here at what's happening, we've got our outer and we've got our inner. This is similar to what we had before. All right. Now, let's do an HF copy layer. So let us keep a hold of this here. Crater, small craters, sorry. Spell it right. <laughs> inner. Set up an HF noise. Wire up both inputs. And let's see here. We want to use the small outer. Uh, we want to add. We want to turn off center. And we want to bring this down to like 20 or 30. Something like that, I don't know. I think, let's go with 30. Give us some around, like flat tops. You'll see this is fundamentally different output and result from what we would get with the, uh, with the project node in regular mode. Uh, we're using the masking operation to drive this stuff. Okay. Now, let's basically just copy this node. Let's hold down Alt, dra Alt, drag, wire up both of these into the node. 
And this time we're going to set it to, um, let's see, we're going to set this to enter. And we're going to set this to subtract. And then we may set this to, say, 40. And then let's bring this element size down. You'll see we've got, so, you know, we're getting some variation here. So we can, we can play with that a little bit. All right. Um, you know what? Let's make those craters a little bigger. So all we've got to do really is go into here and say eh, 75. Mm, 30. 40, sorry. There we go. Yeah, all right. So that's a little better. All right. Now, where were we? Okay, so now we want to add an HF flow field. This is going to give us uh, a flow map uh, and a water, uh, water mask. We can isolate those and have a peek if we want. I'll make this quick, whoops. Let's do, so the flow, flow direction X, flow direction Y, which would be up, there's nothing there, flow direction Z, and then water, all right? Um, we want to use the flow mask to drive an HF distort by layer. We're going to plug it into plug the output of the flow field into the, both of the inputs of the distort by layer. We're going to set the field that we want to scale by to be the flow field. And then we can, we can play around with this, this scale, displace scale. And if we look here, you can see we're getting a nice, um, it's using the height gradient of the height field itself and then using the flow mask to scale uh, the displacement. And so we end up with uh, a very nice, very nice effect uh, here that follows the flow that had already, uh, that we already established using this flow field. So it just, it creates more of that, if you will. Now, let's do an HF resample because, uh, and I, I did that wrong, HF resample. Okay, there we go. That's going to clean that up quite a bit. So now we want to um, do a series of, of mask creations. We're a mask by feature, a height field mask by, whoops, height field mask by feature. All right. We're going to use this a few times back to back. And so Let's familiarize ourselves a little bit with it. It will generate several different masks for you. You can combine these. We're not going to combine them. We're going to separate them, and we're going to customize each one. And uh, for, for what we're trying to do, uh, we're going to leave the first one here as mask to slope. We're going to set this to zero, and we're going to set that to 90. We're going to adjust our ramp here so that We've got a mask that we, that we like visually. And I've already decided that this looks pretty good on this sort of setup on this rig that we're building here. So we're gonna leave that as is. We're going to drop down an HF copy layer because of course, each time we create this mask, we wanna copy that. All right. The destination here is gonna be uh, the slope mask. We're going to name it slope mask. <clears throat> we're going to copy these by selecting them both, holding down alt and dragging them. And we're going to connect them up. We go back to the mask by feature, turn off slope, turn on height, say compute range. Then we want to modify this ramp so that it just goes from zero to one. That's it. Nothing fancy, okay? And then we want to put that in the height mask. <clears throat> now we want to copy that again. In the mask by feature, turn off the, the mask by height, turn on mask by curvature. You're more than welcome to hit compute range, but typically speaking on, on for what we're trying to do, we're gonna be way down here 
uh, in the bottom, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, something like that. All right, this is going to pull out some of the details that would be uh, you know, uh, features that uh, almost look like paths or uh, you know, where the, where the uh, curvature is such, uh, the gradient is such that um, these ridges and, and edges and ledges, so these linear features, begin to, to uh, show themselves. It's just you know, it's an artistic uh, extraction. So let's call this one curvature mask. All righty. And let's see. I think, yeah, you know, you can play around with this. You, you know, you can, whatever you want to do is fine. <laughs> but this will be fine for now. And don't worry about these being blocky. We're going to resample all these masks at the end. Um, and we're almost there. We've only got one more to go. So let's copy these again. And in the mask by feature, turn off the curvature, go down to occlusion, and we're just going to leave it as is. It's, it's going to serve our purposes just, just, just fine. And we're going to rename this to occlusion mask. Then we're going to drop down a flow field again, HF flow field. And this will give us a new fresh flow mask based on uh, the updated uh, geo from our distortion earlier. We, after we had done our flow field, we did a distortion. I suppose we could actually do the flow field back then, but it, 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 this gives us the opportunity to have made other changes in the height field. It, at some point, we could have created some of these masks. We could add some more distortion and then create more masks and then still do another flow field on top of that. But the, the point remains, uh, this is our final flow field. This is the one we're going to use. We're not going to make any changes here. I mean, you could. 0 0.4. I like a little more rain, you know? Um, so we just add a little more. That'll do it. All right? You add more. All right? So yeah, 0 0.54. Let's do that. Yeah, why not? Okay. Now, let's do our resample. And then we'll have another look. There we go. That's better. Okay. Now it's time to export. So let's do a labs, terrain, layer, export. All right. Let's set this to uh, the height map name to workshop. The export folder is hip export. That's fine. Instead of export all layers, we're going to export very specific ones. And we already know which ones they are. They're height. In fact, you know what? Let's, let's go ahead and switch back up to here. So there's height. There's height mask. There's slope mask. Curvature mask. There's occlusion mask. And this flow. And just for fun, and we may or may not use it, but just to show that we can, we're going to export uh, the small craters inner, which will give us the all of the centers. So if we wanted to make them glow or you know, something, we could do that. Anyway, so that's it. Uh, we're ready to go. Hit save. Okay, here we go. Now, remember, these are only the 512 versions, but you can see we've got our masks here. They look, they look pretty good on the surface without digging in too deep. Let's go back up to the top here. And sorry about that. Let's set the uh, grid spacing to one. This will give us our 1,000 by 9, 1,000 by 9 full resolution version without changing the physical scale of all of the operations that we've accomplished so far. We'll just click back on this last node here. Let the whole network bake. That was pretty fast. Uh, let's save to disk.
Yeah. There's our curvature, there's our flow, there's our height mask, there's our occlusion mask, our slope mask, our crater's inner, and the actual uh, height field data, the 16-bit uh, data there. So now we're ready to bring this into Unreal. So we'll see you there. We're going to create a new Unreal project in Unreal 5. We'll choose third person. We want blueprint desktop maximum starter content and we're going to call this workshop 001 and hit create <laughs> create a new folder named Workshop. That's what we're doing now. New folder called this workshop. In here, we're going to create a new basic level. We'll do that using the file new level. Choose basic. Select the floor. Hit delete. Hit Control S. We're going to store this into the workshop directory. Uh, let's name this landscape map. Now, let's create a new material in here, and let's name it M underscore landscape material. Let's open it up. So we want to add a landscape layer blend. I'm going to wire that up into base color. Going to create five layers. The first one, we're going to name dirt. The second one, we're going to name gravel. The third one, snow. The fourth one, flow. The fifth one, do you know? <laughs> Debris. Okay. Now, hold down three and click. That will give you a constant three vector or a color. Let's make this one, it's going to be for the dirt. Let's go with a darker brown color, and we'll plug that into layer dirt. Now, uh, let's control D, create a duplicate, plug that in. Let's go ahead and create three more. We're going to rename these and change the colors, but this is just to give us a, a quick bootstrap on this material. Okay. Gravel. Let's make this silver. We'll set the colors first. So more of like a silver. Uh, the snow, obviously. We'll go with something more close to white. Uh, the flow. Let's go with like a dark, dark, dark blue. And debris can be uh, kind of a, a bluey um, silver. Okay. Now, let's convert each of these to a parameter. This is the dirt color. This will enable us to dynamically change these through material instance variables. So the gravel color. Now you can actually drive this, this with masks and, and, and other, with texture maps and things too. We're going to keep this real simple for this. So just going to show you how to blend. This is the snow layer. Sorry, this should have been color. And flow color. And debris color. Okay. Now let's set the metallic to zero. Let's set the specular to 0 0.5. And let's set the roughness to one or you know, point, 0 0.8 maybe. Okay. Let's save this. Let's go ahead and create a material instance right off the bat. Let's call it uh, M underscore I 
underscore landscape material 001. Let's save that. Okay. Let's go into our landscape mode. Click manage, import file, import from file, enable edit layers, and then let's go find uh, our data. One moment. <laughs> let's pick the height map. That's going to be this one here. And let's pick our material instance. So M underscore, or sorry, M I underscore landscape material 001. That's the new one. You'll see our layers here are now populated. We, we're seeing our layers, but there's no uh, type info here and there's uh, no file selected. We're going we're gonna to take care of that. So first, for each of these, we're going to need to set up a weight blended layer object. This is going to create a layer info object, and it's going to store it underneath the current folder in a subfolder named after the map that we're working in. Don't pay too much attention to that for now. Uh, but again, this is, this is fairly consistent the way this works when you're doing importing like this. Save. We're going to do the same for all five of these. It's going to auto name them based on the layer uh, name that we've defined in the material. Now, for each of these, we can choose to pick the mask file that we're going to use. So for dirt, we can use occlusion. For gravel, we're going to use mm, curvature. For snow, we're going to use the height. For the flow, we're going to use the flow. And for debris, we'll use slope. Okay. Now, scroll down, hit import. Back to select. And you'll see we've already got a result that we can run around in. Just for uh, extra credit, we're going to uh, filter all the materials. And let's pick one forget which one has what we're looking for here. I think burnished steel has it. Yes. So we're going to copy all of these nodes. The macro texture variation, the reduce macro contrast, and this multiply node here. We're just going to copy those. You go back to our landscape material. We're going to copy these in or paste these in rather. Now, we're going to take the color that's coming out of our layer blend, and we're going to plug that into this multiply node. And then we're going to drag the results of that multiply node back into the base color. And then we're going to hit Save. And you're going to see right away that we've had a, a vast improvement uh, to just the overall look of this. Now, let's go one step further. Let's clear. There we go. Let's go to our uh, instance. Let's make this a little smaller. And we can say this flow color. This can be, right? Make that a little darker. Walk around on it, which is what we're going to do now. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I hope you've learned something from it or were inspired uh, by something in here, whether it be a technique or a node or something you hadn't seen before.